His ego and his drug addiction won't allow him to do anything different. Anybody who thinks he's not going to talk is crazy. Not necessarily. The simple fact that he's not saying more now only means that the people who have been protecting him all along, who put him in position to be such a horror to the black community, still find value in him. With Pierce Morgan giving a little bit of background into her experiences, uh, not only with being around Diddy and some of the people who were involved in this case, allegedly that's going on, but some of the things she participated in herself. All right. So who is Jaguar, right? The woman behind the controversy. Trigger warning. This article discusses assault and trafficking. We're not going to use certain words, so y'all should be good here. So just keep that in mind. As Sean Diddy Combs awaits his federal court date where he will plead not guilty to the criminal charges of racketeering, trafficking, the silence of those closest to him has been deafening. But there's one voice that has remained vocal about Diddy and his high profile circle for years. Well, other than 50 Cent, obviously, that of American singer Jaguar Wright. While more disturbing details continue to emerge... Excuse me. The sneeze got me. While more disturbing details continue to emerge about Sean Diddy Combs and his alleged crimes, as well as the music industry, veterans and celebrities whose attendance at the infamous Diddy parties have attracted renewed public scrutiny. Jaguar Wright has maintained that Sean Diddy Combs alleged behavior has always been an open secret. But who is Jaguar Wright and why is she making headlines? Well, let's find out. Born in New Jersey in 1977, Jaguar, whose full name is Jaguar Suzette Wright, is an American singer and songwriter whose career began in the late 90s after being discovered by hip-hop group The Roots. Shout out to The Roots. Uh, but her start in the music industry didn't happen overnight. In an interview with MTV in 2002, Wright noticed that her road to recognition hadn't been easy. I'd been trying to get in for a long time. In 1999, Wright was noticed by Groove Theory's producer Bryce Wilson, who began talking to the singer about joining his group. Around the same time, Wright was booking consistent gigs with an open mic forum that happened to be organized by one of hip-hop's biggest groups at the time, The Roots. In the same interview, Wright shared her experience with learning to make her hard decision early in her career. I went with my gut, she said. Bryce was asking me to give away all my publishing and seeing his music, The Roots offered me an opportunity to move forward with my own career and do the music I believe in. The singer went on to tour with The Roots and in 2001 performed on the Unplugged on on Unplugged on MTV as a backup singer for Jay Z. Okay, so now we're going to go into this very interesting interview that she does with Pierce Morgan. It's she gives a lot of her of background. Less than the amount of time that he does, or possibly even walking away. Apologize. A lot of the background into what happened, what she saw, what's going on in the trial right now, and how she thinks everything is connected. We might get into the DJ Vlad section here too, but uh, let's get to Jaguar right first. Here we go. Big names of actual crimes they committed. That absolutely do not. Well, Diddy's downfall has sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond. The blast radius from the uncovering of his alleged offenses could yet swallow many more powerful and famous figures. Diddy is accused of creating a criminal enterprise which engaged in sex trafficking, racketeering, kidnapping, bribery and forced labour. His lawyers say he'll fight the charges. But after the testimony you're about to hear, he'll be staggered he avoided the attention of law enforcement for so long. I'll speak to a lawyer, a whistleblower and an insider for an uncensored insight into the showbiz scandal of a generation. And Jaguar, I'm going to start with you. Um, yeah. You've been called she got her a whistleblower. Um, you knew Sean... Diddy Combs for a long time. You attended a number of his infamous parties. Um, and in 2022, you made headlines after comments uh, where you called him a sex trafficker. Uh, and in response, you were called crazy and jealous. Uh, do you feel vindicated yes. by the events of the last few weeks? Before she answers that question, I want to know y'all's thoughts in the comments in the chat. People who were around diddy and as pierce put it have been to several of his parties and saw things what responsibility do you think 
a Jaguar right has in this situation. Maybe you don't know yet, so you need to listen to the few full interview. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. No, not at all. Um, I, because he's just the beginning. Until him and his cohorts are all held to account publicly and legally, the victims, they're not safe. How how bad was That's it? That's what I care about. I care about the victims. No, I understand. How bad was it, do you think, what was going on? I'm going to tell you right now that me, as a woman who has been in the industry for over 30 years, um, I've been performing live since I was 13. My first handler was McKinley Horton. Um... I come to find out 25 years later that a scar that was on his face with a very elaborate story he gave me was put there by a woman who he assaulted mm. to live through these things and hear your elders, elders in the business, people like Patti LaBelle say, just avoid him, honey. Um, and being taught to be a just avoid him, honey. It's not good enough. Not when you live through these things, you're still suffering the PTSD created by all of this, and you're talking to a victim that's 20 years younger than you, and she's telling you the exact same thing that happened to you. Right, there's been a lot of uh, rumor mill about what has happened in the rap world. A lot of allegations that the misogyny in the lyrics clearly was based on mm -hmm. a general misogyny towards women away from the music. And that clearly seems to have been borne out yes. by these charges against Diddy, which if he's found guilty of all this, he's never coming out of prison. How dangerous do you think... Thank God. He, how dangerous do you think he is as a person? I think he's one of the most dangerous people I've ever met. A lot of people have been questioning, well, she doesn't really know him. She has no knowledge of him. She doesn't have a picture with him. I'm smarter than Claudia Jordan. I would never take a picture with the devil. Eh, all right, well. If you were at several parties, though, I mean. That's something. Everyone knew he was the devil. He's been the devil for 30 years. He's been covered and protected by not only Clive Davis, but Lucian Grange. Oh, don't say Lucian's name. He was selected to be the demon that he is to keep the culture in line so the industry could continue to rape it for all of its precious jewels. Sheesh. We have too many lost. The list of lost is ridiculous. And everyone knows Diddy was selected for this job. He's the Judas. Hmm. Do you think that if he's cornered in the way that he's been now, that he may start revealing things about other people? He has no choice. His oh, man. She said he has no choice. If Diddy, st if Diddy starts talking to other people, I saw somebody in the chat mention another guy. Ugh, I don't think it's going to be good. And it's seeming like this was the whole reason he was here to get information on other people. And he's got a lot of video and a lot of information on a lot of people. And that's why everybody's quiet. So now have y'all noticed like there's 50 cent, there's Wendy, uh, Wendy Williams, Jaguar, right? Um, who else? Suge Knight. There's a handful of people who are talking about this. All of the celebrities are quiet. And from a legal standpoint, obviously they're going to be quiet, but, Jay-Z too? Oh, Lord. Do you think that if he's cornered in the way that he's been now, that he may start revealing things about other people? He has no choice. His ego and his drug addiction won't allow him to do anything different. Anybody who thinks he's not going to talk is crazy. Not necessarily. The simple fact that he's not saying more now only means that the people who have been protecting him all along, who put him in position to be such a horror to the black community, still find value in him. He's got everybody on tape. There you go. They all know it. It's a mess. 
for those who were never at these freak off parties, she's really dramatic. What were they like? Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing. I'm Everything sorry. that I'm about to say to you is not my first hand knowledge, it is my first hand witness account experience. I was a sex worker, I was a dominatrix before I. Hold on, she said what now? I was a sex worker. I was a dominatrix before I got my record deal. That's how I know how the dark world and the sex world and the entertainment world run hand in hand. What? Okay. That's why the movie Blink Twice is so important. Salute to Zoe Kravitz. The sex workers that I have worked with throughout the years and continue to work with even to this day have worn hidden cameras. I have my own tapes. I've seen what they do. The ritualistic behaviors the drugging the ritualistic behaviors isn't she a dominatrix like do y'all know what that means <laughs> that alone just goes to show you she done some things and seen some things herself now it's interesting oh this is going to be controversial i don't care i'm gonna say it anyway it's 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 always interesting when you hear from people like this who were all up in it doing crazy things and then they want to point the finger at somebody else it's like um a lot of people when a police officer comes out and they say something um you know and and tries to appear as the victim people are like stop the cap i mean come on officer i'm sorry but I, I can't really have sympathy for you. And then you've got a dominatrix sex worker. We're supposed to. Ah, <sighs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Something's not adding up here. She says she was doing that before she was in, before she signed her deal. I, I I'm sorry. Y'all can say whatever you want to, but I find it hard to to take the testimony of somebody like this serious when they when they be all up in it. Putting That's girls just me, in though. suitcases. No, because she's the one talking <sighs> worlds in alleyways. It's it's hard to it's listen horrifying. to. And it's all done under the protection of. This is going to be paid off. There's another NDA. This is going to be it's terrible. It seems to have been something that people she was beating people and tying them up about. But people were simply too scared knows. to talk about. Everyone knows. And every person that's sitting there trying to act surprised knows very well. The whole point of this, like Cat Williams said when he sat with Shay Shay earlier this year. I've never heard music. The whole Renadette. point of I'll this check it out, is for them in a coordinated effort to pretend like none of it is real for the public's perception. But everyone knows what's going on and it's been going on for years. It's been going on before Diddy. See, people keep looking at him like he's the Sputnik that came out of nowhere. This is someone who was designed to be what he is. <laughs> As a dominatrix, wouldn't you have to have someone sign NDAs too? I'm going to let her talk, but it's just, again, it's hard to. Ah, okay. We got to stop making ditties. And if we're going to do that, then we got to go back. We got to go back to even further the mentors of these people. Because Diddy was taught how to do what he does systematically. And Clyde Davis has been his greatest teacher. She was 17 Look, when I'm, she was a dominatrix. Clyde Davis is not here to respond to that. I Guess they're on vacation. If this goes to court, Jaguar, do you think the, the world is going to be shocked by oh, you're good. what comes out? The world's in. Oh, absolutely. I just don't know why they are. 
It's been happening in front of everyone's faces for decades. For decades. How many victims? What's the difference between me and Judy Garland? Social media. Mm. How, how many victims? There was none for her. How many, <laughs> how many victims potentially do you think there could be? Thousands. Thousands. She's right about that. I've talked to hundreds that I deal with still myself. I, I think. What does she mean by that? That's an interesting wording. I talked to hundreds that I deal with. Victims potentially do you think there could be? Thousands. Thousands. I've talked to hundreds yeah, something that I right deal with, with this still one. myself. I, I think people should really look into that more. <clears throat> Well, Loa, I mean, <laughs> you we we've getting we get into consent a lot when we talk about this Diddy trial. And if y'all go back and watch some of the videos I've done on this in the past, the consent issue from a legal standpoint is very, very, very blurry. And Jaguar, I mean, she could get in trouble herself because consent can be removed at any time. It can be removed before can be removed during and it can be removed after and i'm not going to, I'm gonna go into detail about that but consent is it's just one of those things now i mean we're not talking about children i think that goes without saying we're talking about adults right so lois says counterpoint though bdsm is entirely consensual and legal what diddy has been accused of is not i mean you can <laughs> Consensual and, and, and legal, if you go to a Diddy party and you're made aware you have to do certain things to get into the party, party or be around those people, if you want to make the argument and say, oh, well, I felt pressure because I wanted to get into the music industry, that's fine, but you still went to the party. I mean, dang. Are there some interest instances where maybe something was done against somebody's uh, somebody's knowledge? From what I'm seeing, yeah, definitely. But I'm talking about in general, a lot a lot of the people involved and many of the lawsuits I covered several months ago, it, it's, it's clear that they gave consent. It wasn't these weird situations where they were handed a drink and then they passed out. They gave consent and then later on, they didn't like it and they felt guilty about it and now they're pressing charges from what we've seen so far. Now, there's a lot of instances where that's not the case, but I think it's a case by case basis in this instance. I am friends with Albie Shore. I love him, I love his children. I, I knew Kim. We used to all hang out together at the Kit Kat Club back in the mid 90s when Diddy was first starting his reign. I watched that whole thing happen. And Everything that Albert has been through, every attempt on his life that has been ignored by the authorities, it all leads back to Diddy, and everyone knows it. The wiretapping of the phones, putting air tag on children during visits, these are normal practices that these people do. Did air um, tags just come out I've like two really years ago? There. I really appreciate you joining me. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. And thank you for caring. I do care. Thank you very much. Now, somebody in the chat said Diddy's innocent. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Chill out on that. And my theory is, and I'll still stand by this, is that Diddy was set on a mission and the, the people and the authorities and the three letter organizations that he was sent on a mission for, uh, in a sense, gave him somewhat of an idea that he had immunity to certain things. Then the power got to his head. He kept doing, he started doing things he wasn't supposed to with that power. And then as we know, we're in the situation we're in, but, um, yeah, Diddy, he's done a lot of bad, a lot of dirty, evil stuff. And I think he's going to be held accountable. And in this case with Jaguar, right though, I'm not seeing the victim side of it. But maybe there's more to it. Y'all have to let me know in the comments in the chat what y'all think.